This is Aaron from Gemini Syndrome, and you're watching Groovy TV. <laughs> hey, this is Groovy. I'm here with Aaron from Gemini Syndrome. <laughs> Let me scoot closer. Yeah. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. Thank you. How are you? I'm freaking awesome, dude. I'm having, awesome. I'm having a ton of fun. Yeah, we always do. <laughs> we always do. All right, man. So, tour's going awesome. I'm so stoked for tonight. What's all ha What's all happening? What's it been like on the road? Uh, for uh, it's been busy as always, man. This year no different than than last year. We've this year's been huge, though, man. We've been on the road just absolutely constantly, dude. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, we did Red in February, mm -hmm. and then we did South By in March, and then we did a headline run with a, a whole bunch of bands, uh, kind of coming in and out, Devour the Day, I Set to Kill, uh, Star Set, Exotype, through the springtime, went home for, I think, a whopping two weeks, maybe three, right. and then did the Seven Dust run, and so we're pretty much coming out at the end of that. We just did our last show with them on the 23rd uh, in Sioux City, Iowa. So now we have five shows, this being the first of them, to get home. So some Colorado stuff, and then we do Gallup in Vegas, and then we're home, and we're going to go home for like six weeks. You're going to nap for a little bit? Probably like a half a month, yeah. <laughs> it's been, it's just been, it, my, my latest, uh, I guess, metaphor, man, I've been using is, uh, I'm, I'm in the fishbowl. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm just seeing the environment itself, and people can see it from outside, and I don't really pick up on that because I'm... Right. Boo. You know, I'm like the goldfish <laughs> in the... Exactly. <laughs> 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 oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so I don't really see it, you know, but when I start to... Especially now when it's getting to the end of a tour and an end of a, a really long group of tours, mm. I can kind of get a, a second to reflect back and see what we really did and it's just i mean with all the festivals this year oh, yeah. with rock and the range carolina rebellion and uh, to name just two you know it's just been insanely busy and insanely positive for us so. that's, that's the crazy thing and what's really awesome is because it's been really fun watching gemini syndrome grow and expand and like uh, almost on a monthly basis i'm like wow that was pretty freaking cool <laughs> and i and, and c considering from like the last time we talked yeah was back at uh it's the barbecue place mo uh, yeah mo's barbecue yeah, yeah i think that was the last time we did an interview man and like yeah. just to see the growth from there in and of itself is is a little crazy <laughs> you know so I mean? awesome man we went from from rock on the range last year playing the Jaeger stage opening band to opening second stage this year to like 30,000 people. Wow. And it was just such a sight, man, for me to come around the corner, you know, and, and kind of peek my head around and see that crowd. And I was like, the, the surge of adrenaline that comes with that is oh, like yeah. unprecedented, you know, <laughs> like you can't describe that. And, well, I mean, it's it's indescribable. I don't I don't have words for it. It's so awesome, and I know, like you're just you're just getting started. I can tell. I can tell. This is just like as much as you've done. I mean, there's huge stuff coming. Are there any plans that you can talk about that aren't top secret? Yeah. Um, I and mean, basically, we'll finish out this tour. We'll go home and actually have a break mm -hmm. for the first time in a long time. And I'm sure that break won't be. Uh, without work because it never is you know we're not gonna get six weeks of nothing that's for sure <laughs> but at least we'll have time home you know we won't right. be traveling but there'll be other stuff to do we want to get ready for a second record we're really? gonna start writing uh, I should say continue writing we always write but so you do write on the road then yeah we we constantly we, okay. even just at sound check or something you know it doesn't matter might be an idea at two in the morning and you tape it on your phone you know or I tape or write down lyric ideas or something right. um, but it's a constant process, but really going home and then sitting down in a room and kind of honing in on those things becomes the, the real writing process, you know, but at least we have a, a whole group of catalogs to choose from, you right. know, so we'll do that. Do you and, think the next album is going to have a theme to it or anything? Or have you reached any vibe levels on that? Yeah, we've definitely, that's kind of been 
something we talked about from the very beginning of this band was mm-hmm. having this story evolve um, from this first record. It's called Lux. Mm-hmm. means light, basically. It's Which the, is awesome. A great album. The first light to the world, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, we want the second record, I think, I think, we're still kind of hashing it out. It is going to be more of the, if the light is the first light of the morning and then you have the whole day, it'll be more about the experience of that day. Awesome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then uh, that'll eventually lead into death, <laughs> which is just the natural cycle of things, you know? Right. Um, but that's the third album. That's the album after the next one. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I'm talking out of my face right Just now. don't do a zombie record after that, because that'd be bad. That'll be record four. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse record, you know what I mean? No, Shoot him in the head. No, we all take off this hat and I put on like military gear and then we're just take. Speaking of this hat, this is truly the greatest hat I've ever seen personally in real life. What is it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a gift is what it is. It's incredible. It's a gift. It's a gift from a, a friend of mine. Uh, I met her daughter and her, her daughter is uh, 10 years old, adopted from China with albinism. Mm. And so I got to meet them and just another level of how cool it is to be able to do what I do and meet people like that, you know. Right. But uh, they're a family of artists and 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 performers. And uh, the the girl wants to be a contortionist. She's 10 years old. We were at the, the show in Tulsa the other day and we were in front of the Seven Dust merch booth and she's doing this thing where she could like lay down on her stomach and put her feet over her head and then grab them and then roll. No way. And Freddie, the Freddie Mercury, the merch guy for uh, for Seven Dust, has become a good friend of mine. Man, he was like standing behind the booth, like with this look of just total perplexion on his face, like what is happening right now. Anyway, um, yeah, her mom made me this and. Uh, brought it to me at that show and i just thought it was the coolest thing so we're just we're just embracing the circus now i mean like as cool as it looks on the camera it's 10 times cooler here it literally looks like it's riveted out of like steam pipes and it seems like it is it's i think it's leather or pleather or some sort of i'm not really sure but it's incredible um yeah you can tell that they put time and energy into it and they they always do that for us so Again, you know, going back to our fans and stuff that we've talked about before, just the love and energy oh, yeah. they put into what we what we do and what they do for us is like it's ridiculous, man. That's one thing. Like, there's a lot of bands who have success and whatever, but their fans aren't really like rabid. Like when I first like way back in the like early Avenged Sevenfold, their fans were rabid, even though like mm-hmm. no one had heard of them. Like I get a similar vibe with your your fans. They're like just raw. They support you like ten thousand percent. Something you said earlier about just seeing how it's growing from the from the beginning stages, right? Mm-hmm. Looking at those it, a band like that, um, a band like Five Finger Death Punch. Mm-hmm. I don't want to name too many because I don't want to try to say that we're associating with them directly, even though they're our friends. But the point is that if you look at the beginning of their careers, their first record and where they were and kind of put it alongside where we are is I think, I think very similar. I agree. You know what I mean? Like you, you build that we've built a group of, of sinners, a group of people that really believe in this. And, uh, and by all means, thank you for that because without that, we wouldn't even be here. But I think all that, all that energy leads into as the second record comes out it'll grow more and more and exponentially just because of the fact that everyone cares about it so much everyone really believes in it and there's so many people with the tattoo now Mm -hmm. you know i I was the first one to have it and now i don't even know how many people have it i know that everyone that has it did a way cooler one than i have (laughs) Everybody one up to me, which is, which is humbling and honorable and really aggravating at the same time. It's like, damn it! I got I got a friend of mine in 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 the springs that I'm gonna see tomorrow who's done some tattoo work for me, mm. and uh, he has it on his throat oh, wow. with 
a dragon wing and an eagle eye coming out. It's just like this, it's amazing what his, t and it's all right here. It's like a whole throat piece. It's incredible. Wow. And I look at my little like, you know, I mean, it's a good time. I'm, I'm happy with it, but it's just like, man, he just went out and just, just put me down man. just crushed you yeah crushed truly crushed me and there's a lot of people that have really really incredible work with it but in in and of that it's an honor to have people right. go share this speaking of art because i got to totally geek out on this like the art you guys always have <clears throat> like on the albums and the website and everything badass i mean who does all your art um brian brian has a lot to do with it okay. but we worked with a guy named cameron gray out of Australia. He's an artist. He's done work for other bands. Um, I know Brian found him. I'm not sure how. That's an, okay. that's an answer I just can't give you. I just don't know. Sure. But uh, from, the, from the inception of the first record, he was hands-on. He, he was emailing back and forth with me, uh, basically asking for every lyric of every song and then a synopsis for me about what those lyrics meant, mm. which... I didn't really ever do for anyone, you know what I mean? I didn't tell anyone what I really thought. That's the beauty of poems and poetry, is that you can write whatever you want, and people will take it and run with it to whatever place they desire in their mind. Right. And it can mean whatever they want it to. But so with him, he wanted to know literally where I was coming from. So I sent him we had emails back and forth and back and forth from Australia to here, and he would come back with these ideas and these concepts. And so he was just really hands-on, diving in head first to the water and, and wanted to capture um, our vision, I think, yeah. you know, it's and awesome. really be a part of it. So he's he's phenomenal, man. And every time we ask him for something new, he's immediate on it. You it's, know. it's so good. I mean, yeah. and I can see this stuff on, like, skateboards and snowboards and stuff, too. Yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right, man, so is there anything else coming up that's not top secret? Uh, we're going to go out in October. Starting October, I want to say 16th, but it's give or take, a couple okay. days there. Um, looks like we're going to do a few shows with Avatar. Oh, love those guys. I'm very excited about yeah. that. Uh, and then we'll do about a month with Nonpoint okay. again. Awesome. And that'll take us into just before Thanksgiving. Then things are kind of meh, I don't know. Probably yeah. do the holiday thing, probably yeah. take some time off. It's been a busy year. And in whatever intermittent time we have, just continue writing and really try to dive into a second record early next year. Whatever mm -hmm. time we can make that happen, we want to do it. We want to do a second record. I think we're all itching for it. I think everyone wants you to do a second record too. But what? Unfortunately, this means you've reached the point where I ask you a bunch of stupid questions. Are you ready? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know how this goes. <laughs> Did you come? Did you come prepared with a whole new slew of stuff for me? <laughs> Don't answer. Just, <laughs> just ask. Just to torture you. No, I, you know, I, I actually think we're taking it pretty easy these days. Right. Um, I, I don't believe you for a second, but okay. Name two people cooler than Evil Can Evil. Christopher Walken. Why? Because <laughs> he's because he's Christopher Walken. This is a recurring theme in all of my interviews, not just with you now, man. Christopher Walken is quite possibly the coolest guy on the planet. Can you do your best Christopher Walken for me? I could try. Please. I, I don't know if it'll happen or come out right. But do me a favor, Groovy. Do me a favor. Sit back. Sit back and shut up for a second while I tell you what it sounds like when I do Christopher Walken. <laughs> Can you give me a, like a scene from Pulp Fiction or something? I held this chunk of metal up my ass seven years. Travel all the way to America to give it to you. Take this watch. And your second choice. Christopher Walken. <laughs> cooler, cooler than evil can evil a second 
<laughs> second. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just have him in a music video someday, please. Oh, like uh, like Fat Boy Slim did. Oh, the man can the man can act, sing, dance. The man can act, sing, dance, and then scare the shit out of you. Sorry, I don't know if I was supposed to curse or not. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, who would be a second choice? That's good. Um, in all honesty, I would I would go with like Dimebag Daryl. Yeah. I, I think Dimebag is one of the obviously the echelon members of of rock and metal and oh, yeah. and whatnot, and just such a great musician. But I think I think something that he brought to the table of music was just just positivity you know what i mean like he was just always happy to be there happy to play music and i think that's something that so many people in this industry have lost now don't get me, don't get me wrong like it has to be a business you have to have that kind of sense to it but but you know what man music was always supposed to be a blessing to the world it was always supposed to be something that could either i mean could uplift you help you through a dark time could help create ritual it's just it's just so fundamental and that guy came to the table with just nothing but joy for it yeah. and i think i think if you have joy for anything you do you're gonna infuse that with that happiness and I, sure. god bless him man Oh yeah, he's a man. You know what? What brings me joy is asking this next question. Because <laughs> the face really that <laughs> can't wait for this. The faces that people make when I ask this question is priceless. Are you ready? How many extremely angry but unarmed four-year-olds would it take to kick your ass? Quite a few. <laughs> Angry, <laughs> angry, and unarmed. Unarmed. They, yeah, they have no weapons, but they are pissed. <laughs> are they really trying to kill me? Well, they're mad. So well, you, I, you kick your ass, or you know. I have to change my intent then, so we're not just playing kung fu. We're like doing kung fu. Yes, definitely. And this is, you know, it's a imaginary virtual realm, let's say. So there's no moral things behind this. At least fifty. At least 50? At least. How'd you take them down? Kung Fu. <laughs> Be easy, man. They're four-year-olds. Take one hit one hit per one, man. That's easy. They're done. Then you just get tired. Yeah, they'd have to. <laughs> after they wore out my cardio, yes, then we would have an issue to deal with. But at least 50. Because I'm just thinking, I'm thinking like Jet Li movies, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking as they're all crowding around my kneecaps. You know, you just gotta. There's like 15 right there. It's easy, man. You gotta teach me kung fu someday, dude. I have to learn it better. 